can't wait to try it. This is my first time doing it. Cheers. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers to you. Welcome to another episode. I'm Justin. I'm Jeff. And today we are at 21st Amendment Brewery in the heart of downtown San Francisco, just blocks away from AT&T Park. We hear that they have some amazing beers here on draft. We can't wait to try them. Justin, you ready? Let's do it, man. Let's have some beer. Let's have some beer. So if you're ready, here is today's history lesson for 21st Amendment. So what is the 21st Amendment? It's one of the amendments of the Constitution out of 27. This is the first one that repealed a previous amendment, the 18th, which was the prohibition of alcohol. It was ratified on December 5th, 1933, after two-thirds of the states passed its ratification. Where did California fall in this? We were 14. We ratified it in March of 1933. So if you guys are ready, I know we're ready. Let's try some of the beers here at 21st Amendment Brewing. All right guys, so starting off here at 21st Amendment, we are gonna do what they're known for. They're Hell or High Water Melon Wheat. So it's 4.9%, it's a wheat beer with a touch of watermelon. If you've looked at it, uh, we've seen it in grocery stores, specialty stores all over the state, and I can't wait to try it. This is my first time doing it. Cheers. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers to you. So it's exactly as advertised. It's a watermelon wheat beer. You get a little touch of the watermelon. It's just, just faint. I mean, it's there, but it's not overpowering. I don't feel like I just stuck my head in a melon patch. But once you try a piece of the watermelon with it and you drip, dip it again, it just brings it to a whole nother level. It really does elevate the beer, having that little watermelon slice as a garnish. But what I will tell you is the actual body of this beer. You get very light wheat malts. It's not super heavy. This is more of a refreshing style wheat beer. It's not gonna weigh you down. The watermelon flavor itself is very subtle. It's there and you can recognize it. You can definitely point it out. But it's not like you're getting that, that watermelon Jolly Rancher flavor. It tastes like real natural watermelon. And it blends so beautifully with this wheat beer. I can see why this is such a popular beer. Yeah, is it their Heller High Water Mark? We'll see. All right guys, so my first beer here is going to be the Keith. It's an American Pale Ale. This is actually a collaboration beer with Anderson Valley Brewing Company. It weighs in at 6.2%, it's 40 IBUs, and they actually use lime juice in this recipe. I'm interested to see what this tastes like. Cheers. Wow. Mm. This is a very light, citrusy pale ale. You're getting the orange peel, the lime, the lemon peel, all that stuff is coming right off the aroma. And then as soon as you dig in, you have those light, delicious malts and the, the hops. The hops are extremely citrusy. I don't get lime juice as a predominant flavor, but it's definitely there. It blends beautifully with the malts and the hop varieties. If you're into citrus style beers and you want something that's that's light yet hoppy, this is definitely the way I would go. All right guys, so I have the Down Wit It. It is 5%, it's a Belgian wit beer, and they make it with Belgian yeast, so I can't wait to try this. I love my Belgians. This should be nothing different, come on. So this thing doesn't have a particular aroma, 
but the flavors, my god. You're getting coriander, pepper, citrus, you're getting bready, you're getting honey. It's it's very complex for a wit beer, but it's so delicious, so refreshing. The finish is clean, you get those good malts. It is it's one of the best whip beers we probably ever had. I know I kept keep throwing that around sometimes, but this this is damn damn good. The next beer on my list is gonna be the Brew Free or Die IPA. What an awesome name. This is a 7% ABV, 70 IBUs. They use several different hop varieties in this recipe. So let's see how it tastes. Cheers. Wow. There is just an overwhelming amount of hot flavor out of this beer. It's extremely bitter, but it's got great citrus notes, great floral notes, and the malt hits you right on the back end, right at the finish. It's, it's full bodied. This is not an easy drinking style IPA. It's extremely bitter. It's probably because of all the different hop varieties that they use. But at the same time, it's quite delicious. There's a very mild dankness in it as well, but it's subtle. I'm not huge on dankness, so I like that it's not overwhelming my palate. All in all, I would say this is an excellent IPA. All right, guys, next up I have the Sweet Teas. It's a Kentucky Common beer at 5.7%. So they use barley and corn in this beer, and they add a touch of tea for that little, you know, southern sweet tea bell. I love my tea drinks. I hope this is going to be just as good as all the other ones. Cheers. All right, guys, I love my common beers, those, bit, those bitter beers. This is something, it's something familiar, but it's also something different. You get that barley corn mash, it leaves a nice bready texture on your tongue. You get those good malts, but the tea adds another flavor and complexity to it. And then you add a little bit of the lemon that comes with it. But the lemon adds a little bit of citrus to it that you don't have in that beer. And it makes it just a perfectly well-rounded co beer cocktail that you want to have over and over again. It's a perfect sipping drink. It's a perfect summer drink. It's a perfect anytime drink. Next beer on my list is going to be Elizabeth St. Bitter. It's an ESB. It was actually another collaboration beer. This time it was brewed in collaboration with Richard Brewer Hay. Never heard of them, but it sounds like a really interesting ESB. Let's give it a shot. This has got delicious, roasty, toasty malts. You're getting caramel, you're getting toast, you're getting toffee, you're getting that lovely biscuity breadiness to it. And then you have these bittering hops that just kind of hit you throughout the entire beer. It's not overwhelming, but it really carries the flavor of that beer from start to finish. This is a great ESB, probably one of the better ones I've had recently. And it's extremely light, actually. It's not overly malty, and I think it's because of those bittering hops that really elevate this beer. All right, guys, next up I have a variation on the Brew Free or Die IPA. It's their Blood Orange Brew Free or Die IPA. Still the same ABV, 7%, still the same IBU, 70, but definitely all that good blood orange flavor in this nice IPA. Cheers. So this thing smells citrusy. You get the blood orange right off the aroma, and your first taste, a rush of blood orange. It coats your tongue well. It's a little bitter, not overly bitter like a lot of IPAs, but just bitter enough that you know that the hops are there. It has a good multi body, but you definitely get more hops than anything. But that being said, it's very drinkable, very clean. The bitterness doesn't last a long time, and that blood orange flavor just permeates every little bit of it, and it's so refreshing. This next beer is a doozy. It's called the Grain Gadsby. It's 12%. 59 IBUs, and it's brewed with juniper berries. I think I mentioned in a previous video, I don't even think I know what juniper berries are, but now I've had them in a couple beers, so I'm gonna try to see if I can actually recognize that flavor out of this beer. At 12%, it sounds like a gnarly one. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. This thing is definitely 12%. But what I will tell you is the malts in this are fantastic. They're rich, they're delicious. You're literally getting it from start to finish. 
the juniper berries you get, but they're more of an accent. They're almost like a garnish for this beer. It's just right there on the tip of your tongue. It just kind of elevates the beer a little bit more. But the complex, robust malts in this beer make this just a fantastic beer. The last beer on my list today is gonna be the Fisticuffs Dry Stout. This is 5.3%, 33 IBUs. It's brewed with coffee and chocolate malts. Sounds like a beautiful, delicious stout. I can't wait to try it. And on a plus side, it's served on nitro. Cheers. So, for a stout, this is very, very light. A lot of times, whenever I get a coffee chocolate stout, the the malts are overpowering. They're really, really strong. It's a thick mouthfeel on your tongue. This is a very light mouthfeel for a stout. It's nice though, because the chocolate, you're really getting the chocolate off those roasted malts. It's a natural flavor. It's really enjoyable. And the coffee's not overpowering. A lot of times, in any beer that uses coffee, the coffee is usually going to be the main flavor that you pick up on the beer. Here, again, it's just a light little accent. It's like a garnish in the beer. It's really making the malts the star, and at the same time, because it's so light, it makes it an extremely drinkable stout. All right, Justin, so now that we've tried all the beers, let's talk about which one was our favorite. I'm gonna let you start. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there's so many great beers here that it's really hard to choose. But I had so hard of a time choosing, I didn't choose one, I chose two. And I'll tell you why in a second. The first one has to be the Down With It. The, Bel the Belgian Whip Beer is fantastic, it's complex, and it's light. It's definitely one of those things that I want to reach for and drink all day long. And it gives you so many good complex flavors that you want to come back over and over again to see what else you can find in this beer. It is delicious. That being said, the other one that I love has to be the barley wine. The complete opposite. The strongest one on the menu. The Grain Gatsby. 12%. It's a barley wine. It's strong. It is unctuousness in <laughs> grains to the nth degree. But you get that juniper in there as well. It, it's not overpowering. It's not just a side note. It is the gin drinker's barley wine. If you love gin, if you love barley wine, this is the ultimate in what you would want to drink. That being said, those two have to be off the charts, but there are still a lot of great ones that I can't choose from. Jeff, what did you pick? So my favorite beer here is going to be the Keith. This is that American style pale ale. It's light, it's refreshing, it's hoppy, it's aromatic, it's got a lot of citrus flavors in it. It's kind of like an IPA that I can drink all day long. I was extremely happy with the malts. It, it's just... It's just a relaxing, pale ale. All the other beers were fantastic. I would probably say that the Grain Gatsby was a very close second. It was extremely rich in the malts, but when it comes to which beer I would drink again, enthusiastically, it's gotta be the Keef. All right guys, so that's gonna do it here at 21st Amendment Brewery. We had an awesome time and tried some delicious beers. If you guys love this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and let us know your thoughts down in the comments section. So that's Jeff, I'm Justin, we'll see you next time on Let's, Let's Have Some Beer. beer.